Welcome back. The upcoming Panchayat elections in West Bengal have emerged as one of the most violent local body elections that the country has seen in recent times. Just four days left to go, 15 people have lost their lives in violence already. Bullets and bombs in Bengal have become the new norm. Earlier today, violence and bombing was reported in various pockets of South 24 Parganas. A TMC worker received gunshots in Kulthali, while another TMC worker was targeted in the Basanti area. Stone pelting and clashes were reported from Bangar and Kulpi, and bombs were recovered from Murshidabad and Kujbihar. And amidst these sporadic incidents of violence, the Calcutta High Court today has directed the State Election Commission to deploy central and state armed forces in equal measures at each police station, at each polling station, which essentially means that central and state armed forces will be deployed in a 50-50 ratio. 65,000 central forces and 70,000 state armed police would be deployed for the upcoming panchayat elections. This is coming after the election commission appealed to the court to pass an order on the formula for central and state forces deployment based on their sizes. The story doesn't stop there. The Trinamool Congress today wrote to the State Election Commissioner against West Bengal Governor C.B. Ananda Bose. It has accused Governor Bose of interdicting the election process by making what it says are unwarranted statements and questioning the conduct of elections. Not just that, Mamta Banerjee's party has accused the governor of interfering with the election process by conducting meetings with BJP workers in state facilities which it calls a violation of the model code of conduct. It also says the governor has tried to conduct his own parallel inquiry by questioning officials on the law and order situation in the state. The party is also upset with the alleged setting up of a control room in Raj Bhavan for the panchayat elections where common people can come and report their complaints. Now, the complaint to the state poll body came hours after the governor met Manuara Piada, the daughter of a TMC leader, Jairul Mullah, who was allegedly killed by his own party colleagues on Sunday. The governor has criticized the ongoing violence ahead of the elections and described it as polit politics of murder. I'm going to repeat that. The governor has called the violence in the lead up to the panchayat elections in Bengal politics of murder, intimidation and of muscle flexing. Governor Bose has been visiting violence hit areas and is meeting with relatives of those who have died in this violence. My guest this evening for a very quick chat, Shatarupa is spokesperson of the BJP in West Bengal. Thank you very much. Uh, Mohammad Tawseef Rahman, a spokesperson of the TMC. Thank you very much. And Shuk uh, Shikha Mukherjee is a senior journalist. She's joining us on the broadcast as well. Uh, you know, before I come to the politicians, I want to go to Shikha Mukherjee. Shikha Mukherjee, uh, you know, I don't, I don't remember the last time Central forces were called in for a local body election. It's probably just the uh, just the second time that it is happening, and it tells you a lot about what we are seeing in the state of West Bengal. But what explains this level of violence ahead of a panchayat election? Well, I think you know the, the very fact that it is a panchayat election. It's a grassroots level election. The tensions are very high, and over a period of time these tensions have been stoked. There is, you know, violence begets violence. The, the, the confrontation between political parties is an ongoing process in West Bengal. It gets very intense at times. And the verbal confrontations have contributed to the production of these uh, physical acts of confrontation. And then it has, it has escalated beyond that because of the, these are in, this is an election period, to uh, murderous violence. I mean, look at what happened uh, in 2008, 2003. 70 to 80 people died. So, I mean, there is, mm. to my mind, it is a, it is, it is a, it, it is condemnable that political parties in West Bengal mm. simply do not have any intentions mm. of controlling violence and making the, the election process a peaceful one. 
everybody is to blame. Hmm. Uh, uh, Rehman, come in here. Then what is your problem with the governor? What the governor is saying is right. Why do you have a problem if he set up a helpline so that people can come and complain if they are facing harassment or violence uh, ahead of the panchayat elections? That's his duty. What is the problem if he is going and meeting people who have been killed in this violence? Why criticize him? Why write that Lamba Chora letter saying he is interfering with the election process? What is interfering with the election process is the violence that we are seeing uh, that the West Bengal police under the watch of uh, Mamta Banerjee has not been able to control. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Ma'am, uh, we don't have uh, any such problem with the governor. If the governor can stand with a neutral decision and if he doesn't see anything with one eye and if he sees everything with two eyes and if he do uh, justice with all the cadres, whether it comes from BJP, Congress, CPM, TMC, and unfortunately, whosoever is dying, if he is going to get justice by the governor and if he has opened a helpline, but the only thing is that it should be neutral. But at the same time, with all due respect, I mean, it is very hard to judge the opinion of the governor, what he wants and what he has been asked to do in Bengal. So I don't want to go there. But, you know, I totally agree with Shikhaji because Bengal has its own history and uh, you can't deny that. I mean, uh, when you see the elections of 2008, when Central Post was there, before TMC came in power, because TMC came in power in 2011. Now, in two, in 2000, before 2011, I mean, more than 70 people died. In 2003, more than 130 people died, unfortunately. I mean, it's not a numbers game. Now, in the mm -hmm. TMC regime, how many people are dying, whether it's less are it becoming lesser? It's not about. Hey, Rehman, what are you trying to say? No casualties. What are you trying to say? There should be no commodities. Are, are you trying to justify well, this it's violence? Very sad. Rehman, I mean, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to justify this violence by saying this is, it's in Bengal's this is what? DNA? Ki 2003 mein hua tha, 2008 mein hua tha, 2023 This is what I'm using. I mean, what sort of logic is that? Never happen. This is what I'm explaining you, ma'am, that this should never happen. Now, it is very sad whatever happening in Bengal. I mean, since 2016, when BJP entered the mainstream politics in Bengal, they have targeted certain areas and it made it a soft target like Kujbihar, Bhangor, Dinhatta, Bakura. Now, ah. this is a very big conspiracy, man, if you, do, if you don't believe me. It's a conspiracy against the state ruling party and the hmm. biggest conspiracy against the people of Bengal. Hmm. I mean, they want to create a situation like okay. Delhi, what, what Kapil Mishra did in Delhi to create a right. But we have Suvendu Adhikari here, who has taken Shadarupa? the place of Kapil Mishra. I mean, when uh. you talk about the central force, again, 36 people died in 2008. I mean, in BSF, in Sital Kuchi, four people died. No central agencies came. No inquiry happened for Sital Kuchi. Why? I mean, there's a big question where the people of Bengal wants to know about it. BJP cadres are attacking every political parties, knowing that all the central agencies and media with us. So we can exactly do whatever we feel like to disturb the but peace the and governor, harmony of the state. BJP is expert in but, creating but the right governor, where they are you are saying the governor needs to be... Any cost. Okay. Okay. I mean, Shatrupa, respond spin, to that. We have spins for Essentially, what the TMC is saying, unchals, all of this is orchestrated, all of it is orchestrated by the BJP. At the at the behest of the central leadership, which is why the central forces have also been sent in, to protect the goons and target the TMC. Jan Mooch ki hai to give Bengal a bad name. <laughs> yes, Shreya, thank you. Good evening. Uh, in fact, I was just waiting, you know, while I was waiting to uh, fin for Tosif to finish. I was just waiting. When is he going to say this? When is he going to say this? Because the whole narrative for the last, I think, uh, X number of years, when I've already been participating with you for over a year now, but X number of years, they have been blaming the BJP. Contrary to what they were saying, that we have no organization, we have no power, we have no capacity in Bengal, now they are blaming us for everything, everywhere. All said and done. I don't even want to get into that. Uh, I agree with uh, what uh, Shikhati is saying, and I agree with what Tosif is saying. Yes, there is a tradition in Bengal. If, according to them, that tradition in Bengal has been going down for so many years, Trinamul has been in power for over a decade. Trinamul has been in power for 12 years. If Trinamul has been a good government, if Trinamul has been, is so int intricately aware of the so-called tradition of Bengal, uh, like we have the chief minister of Bengal who claims to be Bangla Army, 
Bengal's daughter. So then they should have taken some concrete steps. Shreya, before we even got on air with you and before national media started you know, focusing on Bengal right now, Bengal because of the violence which is happening, unfortunate. But before this happened, this time, for over, I think, six to eight months, there have been rampant uh, you know, complaints about uh, bombs uh, bursting here and uh, comb search, combing searches being made uh, there and a uh, lot of firearms being yeah, uh, sure. uh, discovered from all over Bengal. So then my question is, before the models, the model code of conduct came and we started, you know, we had one person, the state election commissioner to blame. What was the government of West Bengal doing? There was rampant uh, whoever, I'm not even going to what was party the government, here. if you think this is a grand conspiracy by the BJP, okay, okay, Shatarupa, let me put that question to Mohamed Rehman. Mohamed Rehman, if you say this is a grand conspiracy by the BJP to orchestrate violence ahead of the panchayat elections to give the Bengal government and the people of Bengal a bad name, what is your chief minister doing? No, the police course, is under her control. Law and order is under her control, her control not Amit oh, Shah's yes. control. No, no, oh yes, oh yes, of course, of course, we are not backing her. The law and order, the home ministry, everything is under with us. And uh, we have all the capabilities to stop everything, but with the time. But at the same time, I mean, uh, I want to give you a news which is very important. Even Shatrubaji will uh, agree with me. That uh, day before yesterday, I was hearing Dilip Ghosh interview that all these goons are coming from Bangladesh with arms, ammunition, bombs and everything, which TMC is allowing. I mean, it's a big question for the people of Bengal. And I want to make it a breaking news via Mirror now that if something is coming from Bangladesh and if Dilip Ghosh is so much confident about it, then who is controlling the borders? What BSF is doing? Is BSF working with Mamta Energy? Is the army who is deployed in the border is working with Mamta Energy or with the defense minister? Who is responsible and who is allowing these goons to come from Bangladesh? Now, one MLA from Bangor Hmm. His people, just one MLA with one constituency, his people are having arms and AK-47 roaming in the streets openly and claiming that TMC is attacking them. I want to know from where on earth this arms is coming. I mean, it's very scary what's happening in Bengal. Is TMC providing those arms to ISF, like uh, this ISF people or BJP? Who's providing them? So should, shall I say that Amit Shah is okay. providing those arms? Okay. Because Shikha the central Mukherjee. agencies are with them. The, the armies Shikha are with Mukherjee, them, the BSFs are with them. What do you make What's of these allegations and counter... Okay, Rehman. Okay, Shikha it Mukherjee, I'm going to let you have the last word. What do you make of these this blame game that is going on between the BJP and the TMC with now even Bangladesh and armed insurgents from Bangladesh coming in to create trouble during the Panchayat elections has been floated? What do you make of these? Well, I think, you know, everybody is trying to... Uh, deflect attention uh, is trying to deflect responsibility onto somebody else because this violence has generated the kind of attention uh, that is uncomfortable for the party managers. But I don't know whether it's actually going to impact the way in which people vote. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been, I've been following what the governors been doing and what he has been saying and his concerns. While one can appreciate the governor's concern, the fact is that the governor should have maintained a physical distance between himself and the ground where all this is happening for the simple reason that um, there is an element of infringing the role of the governor, which is Fun he's a functional euphemism. He really has, um, he's, mm. and, 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 his, and his declaration that I will prepare a report card and present it to my masters, by which he said, he says that it is the people of West Bengal. He's not required to do any of that. All he's required to do is submit a report to the Ministry of Home Affairs. Mm. And therefore, um, Correct. no... Correct. No institution, no agency, no political party, and political parties are also institutions like the governor, is stepping back from, from kind of making this confrontation 
even more volatile, as it were, because it doesn't help. Okay. 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 If there is such intense it, it attention, doesn't suit, it being doesn't focused. suit either parties, right? Shikha ji, it doesn't for suit either of party. it doesn't suit either of the principal players uh, for no, for violence think, to come I down in the state of West Bengal, which is exactly why things have been I mean, flaring Shreya, up. Let me be mm. very, very, very clear on this: mm. the principal players mm. in this election are all the political parties, including the CPIM, which mm. is which is working very hard to stage a comeback, and there is violence. And it is not that it is a kind of Trinamool versus mm. uh, the BJP confrontation. There is the Trinamool, there is the left, and mm. there is the BJP, and then there is also the Congress. And they, you know, the, they all have their own dominant terms. Correct. I mm. mean, they dominate certain terms. They're, this is where they are, the confrontations are escalating. One has to know the geography of West Bengal in, in order to understand how this violence is actually playing out. And who is who is confronting who it's not as simple as that hmm. i wish okay. it were Shikha and Mahaji, it all points no and it's not it's finish. not binary this you're saying one, yeah. i'll just have uh -huh. one sentence uh -huh. and this this yeah, go ahead, go ahead. that that uh -huh. these political parties hmm. a uh, trinamool sees itself as the defending champion all these are emerging um, challengers and therefore the the stakes for each of these political parties has just gone up. And the tension is not making okay. it any better. Okay. Shikha Mukherjee? All right. We'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you for that perspective. It was good to have you on the show. Uh, Mr. Rehman, always good to have you on the show. And Shaturupa Ji, thank you very much as well. Uh, thank you, all three of you. We are keeping a very close watch on uh, what is happening in the state of West Bengal. Just four days left for the panchayat elections there. Shifting focus, Prime Minister.